I talk at this one? Hello, everyone. Hello, James. Uh, the next uh, presentation will be from a remote location. So I'm going to introduce the next speaker, which is James Gaunt. He is an Australian contributor, mainly working on Wikipedia and Commons. He previously ran the record projects to bring more musician, Australian musician, onto Wikipedia. So James, whenever you're ready. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, thanks for having me. I can see there's a few Australians there, so good day, good day. Uh, and I'll start uh, sharing my screen. Uh, yes, good. You can say that. Um, so first of all, shout out to the amazing illustrations and slide deck created for this year's conference. They're fantastic. I've, I've used them. Uh, so yeah, my name's James. Sorry, I couldn't be there in person, but I hope you can hear me okay. And we'll be able to do a Q&A at the end if unless I go over time. Uh, feel free to reach out to me, leave a message on my talk page on Wikipedia. Uh, or email me by Wikipedia if you'd like to talk to me about anything I touch on today. So in this session, I'll talk about how I created a course on Wikilearn, uh, but I will mention that although I had planned for my course I'm presenting on to be complete and live by now, uh, I had some delays on my end, so sorry about that. Um, right now it should go live by the first week of September, uh, possibly the week before, but we'll see. So I made a course called an Introduction to Wikipedia because I used to run editathons and information sessions when I previously worked for Wikimedia Australia. Uh, so people would attend one or two sessions and then not quite get a full picture of how Wikipedia works or how to contribute, as it's really hard to squeeze all that into a few hours, as I'm sure most of you are aware. Of course, there's a lots of uh, video tutorials on YouTube of various quality, and I've made some of those myself, um, as well as tutorials and guides on Wikipedia. But personally, I really like taking an online course and getting a certificate or micro-credential badge at the end. So that's one of the reasons why I decided to create an online course for beginners to learn about Wikipedia and how they can contribute. Before I jump into the course, you may not have heard of Wikilearn. It's another Wikimedia project, and although it's been around for a few years now, uh, it's still quite young. So Wikilearn is an online learning platform that hosts courses developed by and for the Wikimedia community. Unlike most wiki projects, it doesn't run on MediaWiki and instead, instead uses open edX. Uh, if you have taken an online course on LinkedIn Learning or Coursera or edX, uh, then this will be all fairly familiar to you, and I'll give you a bit of a tour soon. Anyone taking a course can log in using their uh, Wikimedia identity, the OAuth. Uh, so if you've already uh, logged in and, and are editing Wikipedia, you can just log in using the same account. Some courses are self-guided, meaning you can complete them at your own pace, while others are run live, so you might need to participate in activities or there'll be deadlines for homework. For me, I made my course self-guided so that if you want to finish it in one week, you can, uh, or if you want to do one lesson each, every day or every week, uh, you can, and it won't affect whether you can get the certificate. So there's no time limit. Uh, the Wikimedia Foundation's community development team are the ones running Wikilearn, and I've been supported by Melissa from their team while I put this together for my course, and she's been really, really great. Um, so for more information about Wikilearn, uh, there's a page on Meta, or you can go to their website, learn.wiki. I found creating a course in Wikilearn interesting. Uh, it's possibly not as easy as using Visual Editor on Wikipedia, for example, but it's fairly intuitive. I'd previously taken a course on Wikilearn, so I had some idea of the layout possibilities, um, and I was given access to a test area to start playing around and creating my course. And later on, I was able to invite beta testers to test things before they went public. So the first thing I did was write a series of lessons in one document. Um, those are the stats for the final version, so 69 pages and over 25,000 words. Um, this evolved over time, so I initially wrote it from memory, just writing out how I would explain to someone how to use Wikipedia if they were in front of me. Uh, I, I tried to keep it informal, um, but occasionally it's really hard to avoid just dumping information. Uh, the next step was to double check what I'd written by reviewing the many Wikipedia policies and guides, such as the Manual of Style. And once I had a pretty good script done, I sent it to some staff at the foundation and Wikimedia Australia who reviewed it and gave feedback. Um, I have to give a massive shout out to Belinda at Wikimedia Australia here because she gave me so much feedback 
uh, and it really helped make the course uh, much better and clearer. So then after revising everything, the next step was to record. So I created a new Wikipedia account, and then I recorded my screen as I was discovering Wikipedia for the first time. This was really fun as I tried to follow my script and then realized that things just weren't always the same. So once again, I had to revise it before recording the narration. This is the studio, uh, the studio I used to record the audio narration when creating this course. So this is actually at the State Library Victoria in Melbourne, Australia, and it's a free studio anyone can use. There's four mics, a, mix, a mixing desk, and it's mostly soundproof. Occasionally the aircon could be heard and it, I was able to kind of EQ it out. Uh, so if it was picked up, I, I could kind of remove it, but yeah, kind of troubling when you're sitting in there going, oh, I hope this doesn't get picked up. Uh, so I booked the sessions here and we would record for an hour or so, then go home uh, to add the audio over my video. And this led to another issue. So before I began this project, I met with the staff at the foundation to discuss my plan. And one of the things they said was, don't let any video go over five minutes because people will lose interest. So while in editing, I suddenly found I had so much information in each lesson that some went for over 10 minutes. Uh, so I then split them up or edited them down as I realized I'd gone into way much detail. Um, I'm one of those people that likes to get stuck into a dense manual, but there's a difference between reading a lot of information and having to watch it. So I realized the script didn't always translate well into video, um, unfortunately, while I was editing it. Um, for one particular dense section, I made it a series of pages of text broken up so that there's not too much to read, and this worked much better. So this is what it looks like for me when I'm editing the course in Wikilearn. There's some tips on the right-hand side and the actual course structure on the left. I've split my course up into sections. So you can, you can see here one is called Introduction near the top. Uh, and then at the bottom, there's one called What is Wiki Wiki Wikipedia? Uh, then there are subsections, which I use to break up different lessons, and then the units of the lessons themselves. This is what it looks like in one of the lessons or units, as Wikilearn calls them. Uh, this one is about logging into Wikipedia, and it's a video. So. Uh, below the video, I've added a text area with some links, and below that, there's a menu to add additional components. So I could add a discussion area directly into the page, a quiz, or more videos. Um, I decided not to have more than one video at a, at a time in the lesson pages because I think it's easier to, to digest information when there's a clear break. Uh, you can see that within the text area as well, I've added alternative links for the videos because my biggest fear was that the embedded videos might not play nice with some browsers. Uh, so I added direct links to where I uploaded them to YouTube and comments. I also created a PDF of the lesson with screenshots and text for those who prefer reading along or who want a printed copy. Uh, then I added links at the bottom for most lessons uh, to policy and guides or additional information about whatever I spoke about in the, in the lesson. This is what it looks like when you edit the text field. So you can see it has the usual options like paragraph, fonts, bold, italics, adding links, and also switching to HTML mode to edit things that way. So for example, if you wanted to embed some external content, you'll notice that for the additional sources area, I just pasted in the full URL. Uh, this is because of a, a personal annoyance I have of not knowing where links go sometimes. So I wanted it to be clear that most of the links I'm sharing are for pages on Wikipedia, or in this case, MediaWiki, um, but that's just a personal preference. Here's what it looks like when you add a video that's embedded in the previous page I showed. Uh, so Wikilearn wants you to add two links, one for an MP4 on YouTube and a WebM file on Commons, for example. Uh, it will then default to the one it thinks is best for the browser. I found it tended to default to YouTube for me, which is, is fine in my case, but I was really afraid someone else taking the course might be forced to watch two minute videos of weird ads before each lesson and then quit the course out of frustration. So that's why I only added a link to the video on Commons here and then added alternative links to YouTube in the text field. Uh, you can also see just kind of cropped at the bottom, uh, you can add transcripts, which I still need to do. Just on the topic of videos, this is one of the videos on Commons that I uploaded. Um, unfortunately, you can't put the page URL into Wikilearn to embed the video. Instead, you need to scroll down the page and then under transcode status, um, you're linked to one of the files with VP9 in the name. So these are the WebM files and they're available under different qualities. 
So this is a slight annoyance because if I embedded a YouTube video, I could just paste in the, in the video link and then anyone watching the videos could change the quality. Uh, but because I relied on commons, I had to link a specific quality version and the person watching can't change that quality if their internet is too slow or if they have a large screen, for example. Um, I chose to embed 720p files, which are fairly good. But if anyone does have an issue, at least there's other options in the text description uh, below the video as shown before. So back on WikiLearn, this is how you create a quiz, or rather this is if after you've clicked the edit button, uh, you can choose what type of quiz format you want, like multiple choice or check boxes. Uh, you can also add an explanation that people can choose to see after they've submitted their answers. I set my quizzes so you can take them multiple times, but you can limit this if you want to. Uh, I did put a limit on the final quiz, but this can also be overridden by the course creator if needed. Uh, just going back, this is what it looked like for me creating the course outline with sections, subsections, and units. And this is what it looks like for someone who is taking the course. So you can see it has the same layout. They can click the, the plus and minus symbols to expand or unexpand uh, the sections uh, to see the units which are shown with the blue links. Uh, clicking those will take them straight to the units or lessons. Uh, you can also see I've added some messages asking people for feedback at the moment while I've just been testing things. So you can use these to remind people about deadlines, quizzes, or to link to useful resources. So this is what the student sees when clicking on a lesson. Uh, so there's the video, and then scrolling down, there's the text area with the links, and you can also navigate the course at the bottom to go back and forth, uh, which is also at the top. So you can see the, the previous to next links there to go back and forth between lessons or by clicking on the home icon in the left-hand corner or the course link at the top, they'll go back to the main page of the course. So this is what a quiz looked like as the student would see it. Uh, then at the top of the screen, um, I'll just talk about the menus there. So with course, as I mentioned, you go back to the course main page. And then dates would show you things like the course start date and any deadlines. Um, this isn't really relevant to my course because it's set to just run forever, so there's no deadlines. Um, but if you had a course that had deadlines every week, this is where the student would see that. Uh, next to that is progress. So this shows you your overall progress, but it's actually kind of misleading. Uh, so you can see here that it says this first lesson is complete 100%, and it says the video and text are complete here. But it also says the one below it is only 50% complete. Uh, so you'd assume that meant the student hadn't completed something, right? But if we look at that, um, it says that the, the text is complete, but the video isn't complete. So this is actually kind of annoying uh, because on WikiLearn and most open edX courses that I've seen, you have to watch a video lesson up until at least the last 10 seconds or so, or it will assume you didn't watch it at all. So even if the student watched most of the lesson or maybe looked at the content by reading the PDF I've shared, they won't see the lesson as being 100% complete. This has no effect on them getting the certificate and really doesn't matter at the end of the day, but it's annoying for some people. Uh, one way around it is to either embed the videos in an iframe in the text field, which is kind of clunky, um, but it does remove the check for whether a video was watched. Um, I just think it's a minor issue, but I'm gathering feedback on that. Uh, so back at the top in that menu, uh, I added a help page with just some general tips on where to find help about WikiLearn or Wikipedia, and then some troubleshooting tips for video playback too. Um, and then after that, there is the discussion page. I'm actually not a fan of this. Um, I'd rather have people um, taking my course just go to Wikipedia for help uh, or contact me directly if there's an issue with the course, um, but it can't be disabled for now. Uh, so this is what it looks like for a course creator when adding pages to that menu we just looked at. You can see that the help page can be edited or deleted because it's one I added myself. The other pages, progress and discussion, can be moved around and reordered but can't be deleted. Uh, and then there's also the option to have a wiki as well, but I disabled that as I thought it would confuse the students taking my course if I introduce another wiki space. Um, but you could add any type of pages you want and, and embed text or videos or images or links or textbooks, et cetera. Uh, just on that, actually, there's something I haven't explored, but you can add textbooks on WikiLearn. I believe it's a PDF. Uh, it looks like this page uh, for the course creator. Uh, but again, I haven't actually explored this. 
Uh, I also just wanted to mention that course creators are in charge of grading. So my course does it automatically and it's based on the score of the final quiz mostly, uh, but you can change the grade range and add more requirements to make it more or less strict if needed to. So at the end of the day, once a student has passed, they'll get a certificate and badge that they can download or link to on their LinkedIn or Wikipedia page. Um, I should mention there's heaps of documentation for Open edX to help uh, when you're creating a course. And of course, the WikiLearn team are fantastic as well. Um, just to quickly tell you a bit more about my course, because I haven't really touched on it yet, uh, but I broke it up into 11 sections. So starting with introduction and ending with the final quiz. And in between that, I explain what Wikipedia is, how to log in, what all the menus and notifications are, how to use your homepage, user page, talk page, where to get help, how to edit Wikipedia and use your sandbox, a brief introduction to copyright and creative commons, how to add references and what a good reference is, how to access more with your Wikipedia account, like the Wikipedia library and page stats on Wikipedia, as well as how to find your local community and attend events like Wikimania, and also how to create an article finally. So it's really it's really aimed at beginners, complete beginners. Um, but some of the experienced users who tested it recently said they found uh, new things as well. So that's always good. Um, but yeah, after you've completed the course, you get a certificate or badge. So here's a here's a badge I got for completing a course a while ago. I believe the the teacher for this course is sitting in the in the audience. Um, my course is still in beta testing, so you can't get a certificate or badge for it yet. But once it's out of beta, um, I'll be able to award any of my testers their badge and certificate if they've finished the course. That's cool. Uh, I had a few challenges while making this course, and I won't cover them all. Um, I would love to spend hours moaning and, and, and complaining about all the little things, but we've got a time limit. Um, these are just some of the, the problems I had, you know, other things like I got sick, I moved house, they're all minor, but there's two things I will mention. So one of the problems I encountered was how things would change on Wikipedia. Uh, I won't detail them all, but after I finished all of my videos, Wikipedia's appearance menu was released. Um, rather than redo the videos, I just added a short page with screenshots showing how the new menu works, and that was fine. Uh, and then a few weeks later, they added dark mode, so I had to redo it all over again. Um, so I, I knew some things might change and I'd need to do occasional updates, but it's still frustrating when it happens. The other big challenge was around video formats. Uh, so I used Final Cut Pro, which as far as I know, doesn't export WebM format, but WebM is the format Commons uses. So I needed to, I, need, I wanted to add everything to Commons. So I, I had to use WebM. Uh, so I had to export an MP4 file, which is perfect for YouTube. Then I convert the web uh, the MP4 to WebM using a program called Handbrake, and then I'd upload that to Commons. Um, this added a lot of additional time. Um, Final Cut was pretty quick at exporting the videos, but then converting it to WebM took ages and added a lot of extra time. Um, I had a few beta testers go through the course recently and give me feedback. So these were Wikimedia Australia staff and some of their partners who were interested in rolling out a course to their organizations, potentially. Several typos were found and feedback was given about how the quizzes worked with one person suggesting they were all just a bit too easy. Um, overall, the feedback was positive with just some minor things needing attention and a lot of feedback focused on how Wikilearn worked as no one had actually used it before. So for example, one person was really interested in how the discussion area could be used. Um, I mentioned I'd actually prefer it was disabled, um, but I can see how this would be great for classes who were taking the course together. And that's how this person providing feedback saw it. Finally, I, I touched on this earlier, but a minor challenge was just figuring out uh, whether information should be presented as a video or text. So for me, I prefer learning by watching a video, but when I got to notability, I realized the video was boring. So I broke this up uh, into several pages because I was just showing examples of notability criteria from Wikipedia's policy pages. Uh, that being said, I did get some feedback that without a video here, some students might just skip over this section and notability is extremely important. So I'm figuring out whether to add a new video in here that introduces the basics before the pages of text. Um, I still need to have a think about that uh, next week as I don't have access to a studio at the moment. Um, I expect I'll get some more feedback uh, once the course does go live um, and I'll keep the, the feedback form open as well. 
So the next steps, uh, I mentioned that yeah, next week I'll be meeting with the Wiki Learn team to look over the course one last time before it's launched. Um, I have a few of the PDF lesson guides to complete, um, adding transcripts and things like that. Um, and then I'll write an announcement for DIFF so everyone knows that it's out. Um, one idea that I discussed with the Wikimedia Australia team is to have this course run as part of a professional development program for employees. So people who complete the course as part of their job would get an additional certificate from Wikimedia Australia to confirm they completed the course and outlining their learnings. Uh, this could be offered to Glamour education institutions, so that's kind of a plan. Um, for anyone interested in collecting stats, as a course creator, I can see a list of the Wikimedia usernames of those who participate in the course. So I'm adding them to a dashboard to see if people who take the course actually continue editing Wikipedia in the future or not. Um, so I realized I really rushed through that, but uh, I, I wanted to leave some time for questions if possible. Uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to yell out. Um, the slides are on the program page and all the links are in there as well. Yeah, nobody so far has questions. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yes, uh, James, can you hear us? Yes, yeah, okay, I can. Great. Hello, and thank you for a nice presentation. I was uh, thinking, uh, being non-English speaking, how much of the content is possible to translate to other courses in other languages from from the resources that you are doing right now? Yeah, so I guess the videos would be a bit difficult to translate because it's me speaking in English, uh, but you could take the transcript script and um, translate that, or, or you could um, add subtitles. Um, I, I think one of the good things about WikiLearn is you can just clone a course and then go in and uh, add, add an additional language um, or a new language, create a new language version, um, which some of the courses that are currently on there have done that. Um, I guess the biggest issue is Wikipedia is different in every uh, region. So English Wikipedia and French Wikipedia are very different. Um, I was really keen to maybe work on a translation and then I realized how different a lot of the policies around notability for example are uh, so I would say it would it would be a lot of work but if someone is interested uh, they can um, and if someone wanted to just take my course and add subtitles in another language um, that would be like uh, the wiki learn team would be open to that and I, I could give a hand as well yes I wanted to follow up on that I'm Asaf I'm the wiki learn program officer um, WikiLearn itself offers the chance to take a course that you like and clone it and into another language and it will automatically export all of the content, all the text, including the video subtitles, to Meta, where it could be translated in the usual way we translate strings on Meta. And uh, every few hours it pulls back all the newly translated strings from Meta back into WikiLearn so that you, as the creator of this new course, could kind of receive these translations, approve them, because we don't want spam and things automatically going live, uh, approve them, and then uh, have your own course. And of course, once it's cloned, you can also change it if some of what uh, James is saying about English Wikipedia notability doesn't apply uh, in your Wikipedia. Uh, obviously, you should change it. You should not mislead people. But yes, the any course on Wikilearn can be the basis for uh, either a revised or translated or both uh, version, uh, if you like. Um, thank you so much, Asaf. Uh, thank you so much, James. You're doing a great work. Uh, so from what Asaf just uh, said, uh, I was um, I think this will really help my community, uh, uh, like the newcomers. Um, in Arusha, Tanzania, like they will, it, it will really uh, be a game changer for our community. So uh, I wanted to ask Asaf, how, how do we, if we want to do the translations uh, from Meta, how do we uh, go about it? Because I think I need to. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll talk. Come talk to you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Um, I guess just on, on the topic of translations, so I'm not the only one creating courses uh, that are introductions to Wikipedia. There's uh, a team in Africa, and I, sorry, I, I cannot remember uh, which which team exactly that is, ASAP might know, um, but they're, they're doing something similar for their community. Um, and yeah, 
this this was this this course was kind of a trial for the wiki learn team um to kind of see what i could create um but then ideally at some point there will be other introductions to uh wiki data or commons i'm actually creating one about commons but um the the upload screen changed and i've had to scrap all my videos so that's not annoying <laughs> sounds very good okay thank you very much james yeah thank around. you thanks for having Ciao. me